And I want to preface this discussion by, you know, saying that, you know, most of our criticisms here, and I think most of the criticisms we're going to spotlight are constructive criticisms. You know, I think both Zach and I, uh, we both like Kyle Kalinske, despite our disagreements with the guy. I think he's a good faith actor. And I will say that even though I think he's made some pretty severe missteps as of late as far as his channel goes i do respect the fact that he's not leaning into right-wing talking points in order to kind of do the right-wing pivot the right-wing grift that so many uh left channels so many contemporaries of his have done in the post bernie era because they freak out seeing their declining numbers so again respect to the fact that kyle is not going down that kind of right-wing grift rabbit hole. Uh, that That is worth shouting out and, and very, very important. It, it shows the fact that he does have integrity and, and puts his principles above profit. So again, this is coming from a place of constructive criticism, um, but it has to be talked about. And this isn't the first time we've discussed this on the show, uh, but I think this is you know worth talking about again for a couple of reasons. And if you guys follow the Secular Talk subreddit, uh, you might realize that basically like, Every other post at this point on there is people complaining about Kyle Kalinske's content as it currently is done, the way he's currently doing it. Uh, people are pointing out the fact that a lot of his commentary has become stale. Uh, people are pointing out a lot of the ways in which he's refusing to adapt to the more modern um, online left environment. Um, and here's one post that, you know, details some of these issues. This, this says, why is Kyle lo losing subscribers? He went from 973,000 to 972,000, and now he's lost another 1,000 subs. He's down to 971,000, which obviously is a way more subs than the Vanguard will ever have as a channel. But still, uh, this is a decline worth noting, worth talking about. You know, Kyle Kalinske almost got to a million subs, and since then he's kind of trickling downward instead of upward. So he's going in the wrong direction. He's not going up, he's going down. And let's take a look at some of the responses that people have to this thread uh, asking why exactly this is happening. Let's take a look here. It says, it's getting boringly repetitive. Kyle needs to do live videos and call-ins and actually engage with his audience to make it feel like a community. Think like David Pakman. Obviously, he doesn't need to agree with everything Pakman says. And I think that's a very accurate comment. And I'm not someone that, you know, watches much David Pakman. Um, but I do think it's fair to say that David Pakman has, you know, modernized his content in a way that is more appealing to a lot of the people that currently consume this sort of commentary, uh, namely by doing live streams and call-ins, actually engaging with the audience, as this comment says. I think that the number one thing that Kyle Kalinske should do if he wants to you know, save his channel from irrelevance is to go live, is to do live streams on a weekly basis, maybe multiple live streams on a weekly basis. He could just do his regular show, but as a live stream, that way he could engage with his community via the chat. That way he could get feedback instantaneously um, and feel like it's a, a little bit more of an actual community based around his uh, show rather than just like, him in a basement somewhere uh, broadcasting out to an increasingly small audience. Um, so I think this comment is, you know, it's a top comment for a reason. It's spot on. Um, Kyle's commentary is getting a little bit boring. Even though I agree with a lot of what Kyle Kalinske says, he goes back to the same well over and over and over again, uh, brings up the same talking points over and over again. And this does get stale. You can almost predict exactly what you're going to hear when you click on a secular talk video at this point. Um, and it seems like Kyle, in lieu of taking advice such as this, in lieu of you know, modernizing his approach and adapting to the new, you know, more popular model of doing live streams. Instead of doing that, it, it almost would seem that he's uh, attempting or hoping to ride the coattails of Crystal Ball and Breaking Points in order to bolster his show, which just isn't working. So again, I think this is great advice and we'll look at some more comments, some more responses, um, but I'm going to guess you agree with that, Zach, right? Yeah, I think there's a, a lot to unpack here. I think that Kyle is definitely aware that his channel is uh, suffering. And I also want to get to the thing that you mentioned at the beginning, which is the fact that, you know, people are, uh, and I've been reading the chat along as well, and I have a little bit of a disagreement with some people. So I want to address it. It's, you know, a lot of people are saying, oh, or, or some people, the argument that I want to address is that, oh, you guys don't understand, like Kyle is going right wing he's just going neoliberal right wing and and i really i don't think that that's the case at all in fact i think we've really clearly laid out that kyle has remained remarkably in his own position over the course of the last two years over the course of the bernie uh 
uh, era, uh, to which the majority of the online left, people like me and Gavin, have actually moved to the left of where he's always been. So it's easy for us to reflect back on him uh, and say, oh, well, he's actually drifting right wing it's like no actually kyle's where he's always been and he's always been kind of making those arguments uh so i, I have to give the guy that he has been remarkably uh you know uh stubborn in his points but he's also re you know remain c consistent as fuck right that like whether or not i agree with him i feel like it's consistent right my views have evolved in a way that uh, i think differ diverge from the way kyle has uh you know continued to make his points and i honestly i think that's a big part of why people are having a lot of frustration with Kyle because it doesn't feel like uh, he's moved to the left. He hasn't, you know, he, his policy ideas and, and uh, you know, his understanding of the way that the levers of politics work have been, you know, uh, resolute for much of his uh, time hosting his show. And, and to this day, really, whereas uh, in the wake of the Bernie era, a lot of people are looking for something new. Um, so I, I, I completely reject this idea that Kyle's becoming like more and more neoliberal. I think it's just the fact that a lot of us are becoming even less you know, a uh, democratic socialist and more, uh, you know, interested in, in, you know, deep fucking problem solving. Because if you look at a guy like Bernie Sanders, right, every time that he's ever disappointed to me, you know, Ky Kyle will always be like, oh, well, my politics are almost exactly what Bernie Sanders politics are. I just wish Bernie Sanders would, um, you know, fight for those policies a little harder. And, you know, uh, Bernie Sanders has always applauded the incumbent uh, president when, uh, you know, the opportunity arose that he thought they did something good. Uh, you know, just as, you know, Kyle, even though he didn't vote for Joe Biden, is happy to, you know, when he sees fit, apply. It's very Bernie Sanders style. And I just think a lot of us have moved so far beyond um, that Bernie Sanders style um, to, uh, you know, that, that it feels like Kyle is, is moving in the wrong direction. Uh, and I think if you couple that with the fact that he feels disconnected from his community, that it feels like he's, you know, more interested in the Crystal Kyle and friends, you know, uh, building up his, you know, getting involved in this new breaking points audience instead of the secular talk audience that he facilitated, um, you know, and then there's the like weird, like ranking chips videos that we could talk about and and the, oh this is kyle's favorite candy but it's also you know but then he wants to like tweet about how i don't know it, it's very interesting right this the way that he's decided to address this problem uh when it's pretty clear that what a lot of people want is uh for him to address these new ideas on the left and the fact that uh you know people are looking beyond bernie sanders and beyond the justice democrats electoral reform and and get more of his live insight on that uh, and, and get more engagement and be able to push back with and develop uh, with that co with that content creator. That's what people are looking for, right? That's one of the reasons why I think our chat fucks with us at all is because we will engage with Chad and we will uh, listen to their arguments and talk about it on, on air and, and you know, uh, reflect our discourse. And Gavin and I will debate and discuss with somebody else. And I think it gets a little tiresome, especially if you're a solo content creator, to not be doing live engagements with the chat, with a feed, unless you're having a guest on every time uh, but that's not really the secular talk model, right? That was a new thing that he just started doing when, uh, you know, they started Crystal and Kyle and friends. Um, so I, I think him just doing exactly what he does. I think if you look at the way that his content's evolved recently, he is doing stuff where it's like Kyle in a box in the corner reacting to articles and stuff less alone in the studio. And I think that's his attempt to get his foot in the waters to kind of make content that's similar uh, to people who are doing live streams. Uh, but I think what he needs is that people want your actual live presence, Kyle. They want to be able to dialogue with you, to engage with you, to hear pushback on your ideas. And it seemed like it went massively well the last time that he did that. He was wearing his Tiger Woods hat in front of the map. Uh, you know, he asked, he got questions asked to him about Nick Branagh and MPP, and he did that whole fillet. He got asked about, you know, going on the Vanguard. Um, and it, it seemed like it was a good uh, a good stream for him. So I 100% agree that that's a, that would make a big difference for him. But I also think that it's some of that other argument that I was making as well. Right. Well, I think that doing the live stream would help him to freshen up his commentary because, again, it would force him to contend with other perspectives and people in his chat, that live feedback. Uh, because, again, yeah, I agree. He's been totally consistent as far as his ideology goes, um, but it's really getting redundant the way he uh, the way he espouses that ideology.